You're listening to the three top candidates for the Vancouver mayoral race, and it is Kirk LaPointe, Mina Wong, and Gregor Robertson. We've opened up the phone lines here, 604-280-9898, but I have to get through all our listener line questions as well, and thank you to people who participated ahead of time in the process. So we talked about, uh, we got the question from the Business Improvement Association. We heard about congestion. Uh, This is a question specifically for Gregor Robertson, but I'll give everybody a chance to weigh in eventually. And this one has to do with transparency and communication staff. Mr. Robertson, in my past life while working for a large crown corporation in corporate affairs, uh, I can recall calling on City Hall and there may be being two to three people in in the communication staff. I understand there are now 31. Given that Vancouver's current city council has gone down as one of the most secretive and non-transparent in history, what is your justification for having 31 people in your communication staff when it's pretty hard to communicate with City Hall these days? All right, just from the media's perspective, I'd love to hear the answer to this as well. Yeah, well, a couple things that uh, we made changes on, and that was, first of all, consolidating all the communications workers around the city. They were basically spread through all different departments. So City Hall had a small complement, as did uh, all the rest of the departments in the city. So they're all in one shop now. And all of the consultation and engagement that the city does all throughout communities across Vancouver are part of the communications department now. So all this talk about it bumping up is uh, is actually... Uh, demeaning the work of city workers who do consultation and engagement work on the front lines who are in our neighborhoods talking to people and trying to help us make the most thoughtful decisions that we can when we're faced with tough choices. So there, there are a lot of good communications workers at the city that are spending most of their time in the community and in neighborhoods talking with people. But what about that idea that it's tough to get answers out of City Hall, just getting a call returned and getting access? Well, I think that, you know, there's always room for improvement on that. We, we certainly have... Uh, uh, streamline the system so that, uh, that there, there is access, obviously, and there's all of council to talk to and, and uh, management team as well. And that's a constant, uh, constant back and forth with media. And uh, we acknowledge we got to keep improving on that. But I think, I mean, the key thing uh, in this election, really, I mean, this is an important issue. There are huge important issues that are important to be communicating on. And we're not hearing any communications, for example, from the NPA on what they're going to do on homelessness or affordable housing or transit oh. or environment or child care. Well, that, nice pivot. That, that I, is the, that's a, I, I, that is I would like to weigh in again. here as well. Nice pivot. But I do want to go back to this question to ask you, and I'll ask you, Ms. Wong, as well, Mr. LaPointe, what would you do to, would you change that? And what specifically would you do to change that policy? Absolutely. Like I've spent 35 years studying secrecy in government. We have the most secretive government right here, right here in Vancouver. It doesn't let its public servants talk to the press. It gets an That's F. Not true. It gets an F on uh, freedom of information. And uh, and I would uh, change the law. I would change the law to make routine disclosure of information uh, a law in this city. I would pattern it on the strongest law that exists in the world. And I would make sure that the culture change at City Hall is such that we are much more open with our activities, with how we spend money. And uh, and I would, by the way, you know, uh, we have as many people working in communications at City Hall as we have gardeners for our 230 parks, including Stanley Park and Queen Elizabeth Park. That's the kind of priority that I think the public does not understand, has not heard properly from Vision Vancouver and why it does it that way. So okay. would you cut I, all I, of the consultations no and engagement? Hello, would you cut no that? interruptions. Let's go to Mina Wong. What did you want to say? Well, thank you. I think that the 33 staff at uh, City Hall with spending $2.2 million on salary alone, we're not even talking about the department's budget. And because we couldn't get hold of that budget, they won't release it. Definitely. So. For that money, what we will do, what we will do is we will actually, we will actually stop that. We will actually transfer those money to areas that's necessary for the city, such as paying city staff a living wage, as well as we want to make sure that the city contractors, their staff are also paid a living wage. And uh, so... We want to make sure that City Hall is open to the people because we believe it's the people who own the City Hall, not the other way around. And it's the City Hall should serve the people and not to lord over the people. And then people have to take them to court in order to access information. Okay, I want to get to a question on the line here. We have Chelsea from Vancouver. Hi, Chelsea. Hi there. What's your question? Who's it for? Um, it is for Kirk and the NPA. I am. Uh, I live and work in East Vancouver, and I'm at the age where a lot of my friends are starting to have children, but they're understandably worried about affordability and childcare costs. And honestly, so am I. 
Um, I'm wondering specifically what the NPA is prepared to do to help make our city affordable for young families to thrive. Okay, thank you. Mr. Thank, LaPointe? Yeah, thanks. Good question. Um, well, first of all, we've said that we want to get at this by trying to attract higher paying jobs into the city, but that isn't going to do all of it. Um, that being said, we have the lowest median income of any Canadian city right now. So here are some of the things we want to work on in order to create affordable rental housing. We want to create a tax credit for new housing investment. We want to allow mixed tenure zones to encourage builders to build rental units. And then we want to increase the supply for first-time home buyers and young families by revitalizing a document called City Plan. It's a process where we'll, we're going to consult in the community as it hasn't been consulted for the last 20 years to see what its own ideas are about how to develop a city property, how to gently densify, how to go about this in a way that not only consults the community but has their buy-in. Because at the moment, we just don't have buy-in in the city. We have towers going up that neighborhoods oppose, and we have about 15 lawsuits right now, all constructed by neighborhood community associations that have found that the city did not listen to them. So we will listen, and we will make sure that young families are attended to. Does that involve child care options? And yes, actually, it's interesting. I mean, the mayor says we have no child care options. One of the things we propose is that there is all sorts of empty school space at the moment that we want to use. We want to have, we want to have providers come in to provide uh, child care. We think that that is a very practical, affordable way of creating it. To, ca- to create a child care space in the community now is over $120,000 under Vision Vancouver. It's being left to the developers. It shouldn't be the case. I mean, the city should be helping for that. And one of the things we can do is to make sure that our, our schools are, are filled properly so we don't have to close any neighborhood schools. Okay, I want to go to this next question. This is Pete in Vancouver. Pete, who's it for and what's your question? Hi, it's actually for all of them. Okay. And uh, it's basically about being honest with voters before we vote. Would you all commit to listing all three years of donations that you've got, 2012, 13, and 14, um, before we vote. The 2012 and 13, you legally don't have to, uh, but morally you should because it's dark money and we don't need to know okay. who's renting access yes. to you before we vote. All right, well, Pete, I'll put that. I'll start with you, uh, Mina Wong, this time. Yes, definitely, Pete. And uh, I think that that's very important to be accountable and to be transparent. And uh, you're absolutely right. You know, there's uh, approximately, I think uh, I heard it's $4 million, uh, dark money that Vision has raised uh, between the elections. And, but uh, when will COPE release theirs is the question. When will you release your list of donations? Our challenge right now, to be honest, is our financial agent. is the one financial agent looking after like 19 uh, candidates for COPE. And as resources, so what we have is a limitation right now. We would love to co- disclose everything in a timely fashion. But right now we have re- limited so resources. Does that mean it won't be coming before the election? We will try our best. All right, let's go to Vision then. Will you commit to that before the election? Well, we're certainly working on it uh, steadfastly right now, and we just had a big fundraiser last Thursday, over 1,000 people that came out and con- contributed. So there's a, as Mina says, there's a ton of work. When the campaign's full te- steam like this, getting all of this uh, information compiled is a real challenge. We've got a team of people at Vision Vancouver working on it, and, you know, it, it, it does. It, it, we were all shocked when we saw a $940,000 donation to the NPA from one developer. But yes and or no from Vision. That, so there it is. Uh, that's why it's important to see the disclosure. Yeah, and it's, uh, it's our team is working on that right now. We expect that to, to be coming forward in this, this later this week. Yes. Later this week. By the end of this week, can we say? Yeah, that's, that's the goal that the team's working towards right now, yeah. Mr. Right. LaPointe, yes or no? Well, you know, I got the ball rolling on this last week by saying that we'd release our campaign donations mm-hmm. and, and dollar amounts, not just names dollar amounts. Uh, Vision Vancouver then chimed in and said it would have it done by the weekend. Well, you know, here we are. Uh, we're into Wednesday. Not sure how long the weekend lasts, but, uh, you know, but I think... Yes or no? Will it be uh, coming? Actually, we said by Friday we'll actually beat that. We'll have ours out tomorrow. Tomorrow. Mm-hmm. But dollar amounts? Yep. Dollar everything? amounts, dollar amounts and people, right? Yeah. Okay. There you go. Uh, we'll get to one more quick question here. Chris, what's your question? Who's it for? This is for all of them, really, but I kind of want to ask Gregor about this as well. It's there's been so much emphasis put on having the bike bombarded into Vancouver. What is going to be done as far as enforcing the laws and making sure that they're obeying the rules of the road? Okay, I no. A lot of, yeah. Good question, Chris, because I actually asked that during the commercial break myself, too. So uh, this time I'll go back the other way. This started with you, so we'll go here, Mr. Sure. Robertson. Go ahead. Yeah, actually, we've got a, a commitment in the Vision platform that we're going to increase the funding of the VPD so that they can... Uh, more directly target uh, dangerous cyclists. I, I think all of us have a problem with bikes on the sidewalks and putting pedestrians at risk. 
So and dangerous drivers for that matter. We've had a really concerted effort to make our pedestrians safer. We've got the, the fatalities down dramatically. We want to make sure in terms of enforcement, we're focused on bikes and cars that are uh, that are dangerous on the roads and uh, sidewalks. So you're committing to increased enforcement? Yes. Okay. Mina Wong? Well, Gregor, you had six years in office. I mean, you're talking about it right now. And these things that have been happening in the last six years. And uh, it's been... I just wonder, you know, why is this not resolved? Why are you talking about right now? You were in the office and you could have dealt with it and you, you did not. So, you know, right, right now what we have seen is, you know, that there's a, I know personally someone just, uh, you know, like a, a friend of mine that, uh, you know, was in a car accident and by a truck, the truck without the, the, the middle guard. Well, so. Will COPE commit to increased bike enforcement is the question. Definitely. Okay, Mr. LaPointe. You know, NPA built 75% of the bikeways in the city. Not a peep, not a concern out there because uh, they didn't divide the community between motorists and cyclists. So here we have, after six years, people at each other over something that ought to be something that binds us, you know, transportation, recreation. You know, what, why would we be divisive on this? We've said yes. We, of course, need greater enforcement. We've committed a million dollars in our plan to that. And one thing we, we want to make sure of is that, you know, when, um, when we get people out of their cars, that they're not getting out of their cars angry that they're getting out of their cars, going to public transit and to, uh, and to cycling if that's what's possible. So how would you do it? Is that also increased enforcement, yes. or more money for VPD or how? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've, we actually uh, believe we need double the amount that, uh, that the mayor has said is needed because we know that it's really an issue right across the city. We hear from voters all the time okay. saying, you know, we need to responsibilize our, our cyclists. And I think that, that there is a, a need for that, yes. Very quickly. We don't believe in more uh, fining, and, uh, but we believe in better education. Okay. Yeah. All right. Just to be clear on that, when we come back, we'll get closing statements from our candidates. Stay tuned. All right. Well, there have been some great questions, some great debates. I've heard a lot from everybody here. Uh, and you know what? Great calls, too, that if you had a chance, sorry, we couldn't get to all of them. It, uh, But let me know what you thought. Send me at cknw.com. And do debates really change your mind? Did you hear what you wanted to hear? Let me know what you're thinking. Our guests today have been Gregor Robertson, Mina Wong, and Kirk LaPointe. We're talking about the election. And what we were just discussing in the commercial break is, regardless of how you're going to vote, I think if there's one thing that all three candidates can agree on is that they want you to get out and vote. So we're going to start with our final statements, and we're going to go in the opposite order that we did our opening statements in. So we will start with Gregor Robertson. Thanks, Simi, and thanks to everyone listening. I've been honored to serve as Vancouver's mayor for the past six years, and our city really has been thriving. We, our economy is growing. Crime is down 20%. We're seeing our, our, our status on the global stage really elevated, people coming here. because It's a beautiful, livable city, and because our economy is thriving as well. So great opportunities for our city going forward. But I'm uh, really concerned about what happens if uh, Mr. LaPointe and the NPA uh, take over at City Hall and the risk that that creates when they are not putting forward a plan for our city. They're not being transparent about anything on child care homelessness, affordable housing, environment. Uh, they're actually hopeless on transit when we have a critical transit referendum coming up. We need experienced leadership. The Vision Vancouver team has been doing a good job governing our city, and we want to continue doing that. We ask for voter support on November the 15th. Don't take a risk on the NPA. Vision is your experienced team to lead the city forward. Thank you very much. Mina Wong, go ahead. Thank you uh, to CKNW and to my fellow panelists and listeners. This is a big question. Can you afford to live in our city? And if not, who do you trust to make it more affordable? The NPA solution is free parking on Sundays. Vision solution is free swimming lessons. They point fingers at each other and at higher levels of government. It would be funny if the stakes weren't so high. COPE has real, made-in-Vancouver solutions. Only COPE will build city-owned affordable housing and ban rent evictions. Only COPE will make transit affordable with a $30 U-Pass and fight for $15 minimum wage. Some say that our city hall has been controlled by property developers since 1886. And that is always will be. But it's up to you. This, re this election, you can make history. Yes, we're up against powerful interests, but the real power rests with you the voters. On November 15th, vote for the COPE entire COPE team. Only you 
can make history. Thank you very much, Mr. LaPointe. Thanks, Simi. Thank you, uh, panelists. Um, it's also interesting to have a Vision Vancouver camera in our studio, a new, new version of press. So thank you for listening to uh, today. Vancouver has a real choice to make, an open government I can deliver against the closed government you've had, a government that listens against the one that you've taken to court more than a dozen times for not listening, a government that's open for business, that understands you need not choose between a good economy and a good environment. This government stands in the way of job creation. I'll get us out of the way. This government bows to big developers and makes deals with big labor that fail to serve taxpayers. I'll be beholden to no one and deliver laws to make us the most open government in Canada. On your behalf, I'll serve. A government that will deliver basic services again. Cleaner streets and parks, support for our small businesses and neighborhoods. Of course we want a green city, but not before we have a strong city. Ask yourself, are you better off than you were six years ago? Can you truly afford another four years of this? I can deliver the change you want, the Vancouver we want. Thank you very much for your time. Thanks to all of you for being here. I'm Simi Sarah. The Mike Eckford Show is up next.